Good old hails and welcome to Rauda's Classic Reviews or Challenging the Classics as it nowadays is, this format that is. This is one of the requested uh, albums today in question and it's Cannibal Corpse debut album Eaten Back to Life. It's been more than 30 years by now since the album came out and it's widely across the globe I guess I could say. Considered as a classic. First of all, it was one of those kind of early bird bands, even if technically not speaking 1980s release. That is, those guys probably had a lot to do with this album already in the 80s, but as it turned out to be, it was a 1990 release. That is a release date and all. But as everybody knows, when album comes out, it's been recorded months, sometimes even years before, not to mention songwriting and all that stuff. So we could say this is the kind of album that started already in the 80s, but it was already 1990s when this album came out. Nevertheless, definitely a classic, definitely a first wave release and one of the predecessors of what was later known to be Brutal Death Metal. However, Eden Back to Life isn't exactly Brutal Death Metal. One could even make the claim and say this is not pure death metal at all. Now, wait a second before you get mad and start throwing your items ac across the room. Um, I'm merely saying, early death metal, as so many other bands, not only Cannibal Corpse, by no means, early death metal bands, often, especially in the 1980s, had a strong trash metal influence. Cannibal Corpse is one among them, but, like I said, there are many, many others. Listen to early death, listen to early Sepultura, and you get the kind of idea. Yes. Trash metal was so much present with so many albums and Eden Back to Life is not an exception to the rule. Now let's open this uh, metal archive site for the band and before we go into the album and start splitting it into pieces or at least analyze it a little bit, let's take a quick look at the history of Cannibal Corpse according to metal archives, you know, just give the basic idea. Because there are always some people in the audience who are like, I haven't even born yet when this album came out. So, uh, death metal already originally from Buffalo, New York, but in general considered to be Florida death metal band because they kind of are early on located, relocated to there. And like I said, this was a band that was founded in 1980s. Only one official demo seems to exist. Nobody knows. Well, some people probably do if there are rehearsal demos or whatever, but technically speaking, one demo and then ready to record an album. That's uh, quite a thing, quite a feat in fact, if you consider how a good quality and what status this debut album has. But let's quickly rewind. I mean, if you take a look at this list, this is just wonderful, wonderful amounts of releases. I mean, there's a reason why Cannibal Corpse is the number one death metal band, at least in terms of success, album sales and whatever. I mean, it's a touring band, tours a lot, but yet still, Early on, 1990, the debut album. Following years, 1991 and 1992, already two more albums out. Wow. Then EP, compilations. Well, that's kind of a moot point, given that it's more or less the same stuff. But anyway, all these first years, 1991, 92, 93, 94, 96 was skipped. But then again, while 1996 and more stuff coming, 1997, 98, well, you get the idea. Early years, this band was just, you know, going with a uh, machine gun fire, left and right, giving us more brutal death metal and all that stuff. And later on, the pace hasn't really, you know, slowed down except for the last couple of years. Because, you know, the band has been so active, even if they're touring, they're creating all the, all the stuff all the time. Makes this a wonderful band. I mean, the thing is, Cannibal Corpse basically never made a mediocre album, not to mention a bad album, always been more or less quality. And in my opinion, as they have matured, they have become older, they have still put out even better albums than before. But even early on, the band was very, very much at the top of their game, being one of those leading names in death metal and creating wonderful albums. But nowadays, Cannibal Corpse is very, very different band than the early days. Not only because they don't nowadays have those what you could call trashful influences, but during Eden Back to Life, and this requires us to open the members list. Current lineup, if you take a look at this list, you will see only two members from 1980s. Bass player, Alex Webster, one of the creative minds in the band, one could even say 
maybe the most important creator of all music right there. I mean, he's not the only one, but he's the only original member having string instruments and being part of the band. And of course we have Mazurkiewicz, uh, Paul, who I actually got to interview some three years ago, who is the original drummer and being in the band. Not the best in the game in terms of style and all that stuff, but definitely having his own style and being kind of a spine of the whole band. But the rest of the band, I mean, it's very different. Well, Rob Barrett is quite early on, but he also uh, had a few years off the band. And, well, Corpse Kinder Fisher has been since 1995, but so many people still say, yeah, it's Chris Barnes, the original voice of the band. Now, in my opinion, George Corpse Kinder Fisher is actually a way better grower. But be that's me. We're here talking about the original members, which then again bring us to Rob Bob Rousse and Jack Owen. Jack Owen, uh, known for lots of different bands after the years, especially, I guess, D-Side and uh, Six Feet Under. The thing here is, these three are gone from the band for <laughs> already so many years. But these three were part of what Cannibal Corpse was in the beginning, which takes us back to Eden, back to life. Now, that's a kind of a peculiar name. And this is an album that was banned in some, some countries, some civilized countries, if you will. Maybe because, well, you have this kind of a cover art. Uh, I don't know if this is more kind of a ghoul or a zombie or some other undead being. It doesn't really matter which kind of role-playing game definition you have for this creature. But, I mean, he is... He, I'm um, presuming it's he, assuming it's a male one. Uh, anyway, this creature is ripping apart some, uh, well, intestines. Uh, you can see bones, you can see that he isn't exactly going to the gym. So it's very brutal, but it's also a lot of fantasy. It's not like it could upset anybody. Not even kids go really upset, this kind of stuff. Well, some are more sensitive and all that stuff. But anyway, this is the stuff that got banned in so many countries. And I guess that kind of just, you know, was like a gasoline to the uh, flames. You know, you had already the bonfire. You know, Let's ban the shit out of this band. And the band was like, fuck, we're not going to be able to sell so many albums in two right there. But the rest of them were oh, it's dangerous. It's cannibal corpse. It's crazy as shit. And now my phone is ringing. What the hell? Anyway, what we have here is some 35 minutes of death metal with 11 tracks. And while that is not too much to be going on, uh, it's... God damn it, some people don't get it. It's just something that, you know, is very right to the point. I mean, none of these tracks, except, well, two. The first tracks and the last one. They are more than five minutes. But the rest are pretty much right to the point. Less than two minutes, even. Two minutes, three minutes, you know, stuff like that. In this sense, it kind of reminds what Slayer was doing with, you know, album like Justice Rain in Blood. That is trash metal in general, except maybe some Metallica tracks or Megadeth tracks. But so many trash bands were like, right to the point. You don't need more than maybe three, four minutes and you're just done with it. And then you move on, take another piece with another set of lyrics and, you know, get the brutality going on. Now... Even Back to Life is very much, like I said, leading to trash metal ideas. I didn't, to be honest, even remember how much this is reminding me of some early days of Sepultura. There are lots of riffing which is kind of like the same. You kind of have those mosh parts, but you don't necessarily have that kind of a brutality that the band was later on showcasing and all that stuff. So it was more about creating these death metal songs but taking, or at least leaning towards that trash metal. So it's very much like, uh, how to say, um, glowing through. Like as if this death metal was a veil and you have those background lights which are just shining through and you're pretty much listening to something that kind of evolved from trash metal. And like said, so many other bands also did the same thing. They have these trash in. Uh, influences or parts because these guys were actually listening to that kind of stuff and that is something that kind of uh, seeps through these holes which is death metal maybe it's this putrid corpse or whatever anyway that is what makes this fantastic as a debut album at the same time it's one food in that trash territory and it's already taken uh, the step uh, you know uh, over a fence 
uh, figuratively speaking. And, uh, you know, that the new territory is known as death metal, the kind of a unconquered land when this album came out. So it was like death metal was happening already by 1990, but it wasn't that much of a big deal. There were only basically like handful of recognized names. I mean, lots of bands were probably getting ready to do that, but let's be honest about it. Even Florida death metal, which was, I think, the most fertile of all American-based uh, territory for death metal. I mean, there were plenty of bands, Morbid Angel and Death and Obituary and uh, D-Side and all that stuff. But still, that was only like a handful of names. Much like in Sweden, you had only a handful of names. Like, you know, the bands like Entombed and Dismember, so forth. But these different areas, you know, created their own sound. And Cannibal Corpse was definitely creating their own sound. It is very different in a way from Obituary and D-Side and all that stuff. But back in the days, this album wasn't in fact that much uh, so unique in sound. It is one of the reasons why this album sounds so strong still to this day. Not only because of strong production, not only because of crude, growly vocals by Chris Barnes before he kind of uh, went into the pig squeal territory. This death metal combined with the trash metal uh, wasn't maybe the most original one, but it made certain that the album had some kind of appeal. It was like the, the heavier version of if you had already been listening to uh, Slayer and Metallica and Megadeth and Anthrax and those, well, smaller ones, Violence maybe. So there was definitely something like stepping up, you know, Metallica and Slayer and all those names kind of were badass in the 80s. But at the same time where Metallica was kind of a going lighter version, especially during this era. I mean, Black Album wasn't even out yet, but it wasn't like they were doing Kill em All anymore. Slayer then again had already introduced South of Heaven by the time. So definitely, even though they had this intensity and aggression, it seems like Cannibal Corpse needed to step up, take this extreme metal to a whole new level. Doesn't matter what was going on in the black metal territory in the 80s, because... Once again, those bands were only a handful of names, really. But Cannibal Corpse wanted to do something more. This is partially my, uh, with me assuming things and partially what I have understood based on things read, heard, or otherwise. So anyway, they were taking this extreme metal to a new level, adding a level of brutality, but still not going too far from the trash metal stuff. That happened later on, obviously, and then Cannibal Corpse finally got their own unique ways of doing music and kept progressing, evolving and pushing it to farther and farther away from the trash metal sound. But even Back to Life is definitely very interesting because it's not kind of unique, especially if you compare it to nowadays band. It sounds like one in a million. But then you have to understand this album came so many years before most of those names which you, you might be comparing to. And as such, in my opinion, Cannibal Corpse definitely deserves the kind of a king of brutal death metal. Nowadays, there are lots of more brutal bands, obviously. Some are even better. Well, at least some sense. But without albums such as this and the ones, you know, coming after this one, I don't know if brutal death metal would be the same. I kind of doubt it because this... Already with the names like Scattered Remains, Splattered Brains, how brutal that is sounds. Born in a Casket, Skull of Maggots. I mean, it sounds what death metal, brutal death metal is all about. And yeah, it has some catchy parts as well. Brutal riffing, catchy parts, proper growling, strong production, good songwriting, and it's not too lengthy. 35 minutes and you're like, my heart is raising, my heart is pounding because this is giving me aggression and all that stuff with its intensity. A really good album still, but far from being their best. So definitely a classic, which I still like to listen to these days. Actually, and I'll be brutally honest about it uh, with you, uh, I was not I was never a big Cannibal Corpse fan. I, I saw the band a uh, few times, even when it finally started to click with me, because I kind of always like them, but then again, I never gave them a proper listen until a few years ago when I went through, through the whole discography, all the full, al full albums and even some MCD here and there, and I was like, man, this band is so much better than what I kind of give it, gave it credit for. Like, I hadn't even heard some albums because I kind of started skipping at some point. That is, the albums that I didn't get for review. 
And when I went back to this stuff, there is a video about it if, in case you want to check out. Um, it only, only then I figured out how good this album is. And now, now that I got back this after maybe four years, or, well, not exactly four years, but maybe some three and then some years when I did that whole discographic tour and uh, started listening with this one, obviously, because I was cr going in chronological order. Back then I already figured out this was way more trashier than I could remember. And that's part of the charm, at least for me anyway, because I'm a trash metal fan. So I give you the urge and uh, the idea, the recommendation to give Eden Back to Life another go. Maybe revisit it, maybe listen to it for the first time and just enjoy it. It's brutal, it's trashy, it's fun and it's dead metal. Thanks for watching and if you haven't seen my Cannibal Corpse interview done already some, well, three years ago, Give it a go, and uh, there will be some relaxed chat with Paul, the drummer guy. And uh, what else I can say? Stay brutal, stay metal, stay rodent.